gentlemen, would you welcome one of Ireland's favourite comedians, Dusty Young. Uh, thanks very much indeed. And welcome to the city of Dublin where potty training goes under higher education. Needing the paper today, they've opened the pregnancy testing clinic in Dublin and they've got a nine months waiting list. <laughs> Paddy and Mick are walking down O'Connor Street and the sun is splitting the trees. Paddy said, God, Mick, that's a grand day. He said, isn't it? He said, if I was working, I'd have the day off. <laughs> Mick went to the opticians last week. He said, I think the eyesight's gone. The optician took him out to the front door. He said, what can you see up in the sky? He said, the sun. He said, how much further do you want to see? <laughs> he was sitting at home last week with his wife watching the television, a marvellous new programme called Looking Back. It starts at eight o'clock and finishes at half past seven. <laughs> Mary said, Mick, would you come out and see if it's raining? He said, Mary, call the dog in, see if he's wet. <laughs> the grand little dog is an Irish setter that walks backwards and wags its head. <laughs> the other night he was sitting in front of the fire chewing a bone, and when it got up, one of his legs dropped off. <laughs> Mick went out last week to the barbers to get his hair cut. There's a big sign outside the barber that says, Hair cutting while you wait. sat in the chair, the barber says, do you want your hair cut round the back? He said, have you got no room in the shop? <laughs> he said, Mick, you're going bald. He said, well, hurry up then. <laughs> he said to the barber, do you have a deodorant? The barber says, bald tripe? He says, no, no, it's for under my arms. He took his car back last week to the garage, wanted his money back. He said, I won't go past 60 up our hill. The man says, why do you want to go past 60? He said, because I live at 83. <laughs> he lives in a really rough estate outside Dublin. I mean, when you close your window at night, you have to check you haven't trapped somebody's fingers. He drove into the estate last Tuesday and there's a big gang of people gathered around the car parked on the side of the road. He talked about an accident. He said to this lad, what's happened? He said, ah, he said, some silly fools taxed his car. They've all come out to look at the disc. <laughs> so the lad came to his door last week and said, Mr. Murphy, you've won the lottery, three million pounds. Oh, that's fantastic. He said, I'll pack my job in tomorrow. He says, what do you work with? He said, I am the president of the Unemployed Association in Dublin. If the dole finds you a job, we'll fight your case. <laughs> and then they're going to have a damn good holiday. They're going to have six months in the Canary Islands. I'm going to look for the Canaries, he said. And then I'll have six months in the Virgin Islands. <laughs> that sounds good. He said, do you think your wife will like that? He said, why? Has she won three million pounds as well? I flew into Dublin with Air Fungus. We landed at Dublin Airport, well, pretty close to it. <laughs> my brother picked me up at the airport and we're driving into the city. I said, Mick, slow down. He said, what do you mean, slow down? I thought you were driving. <laughs> and we're driving down O'Connor Street looking for a place to park. And he pulled into a space. I said, you can't park there, Mick. It's double yellow lines. He said, don't be stupid. Look at the sign. It says, fine for parking. <laughs> I love the pubs in Dublin. They don't close till October. <laughs> I went into Mooney's bar. There's a fellow lying over the counter, out of the count. I said to the barman, God, he's had a skin full. He says, no, no, he's only had the one. Oh, can I have one of what he had? And the barman went... The little fella in the corner doing the crossword, he said, Mick, spell paint. He said, what colour? 
Got you look awful depressed. What's wrong? He said, I'll tell you what's wrong. He said, my wife reversed the car out of the garage this morning. I said, what's wrong with that? He said, I reversed it into the garage last night. <laughs> God, I was giving her the driving lesson on Tuesday. I told her to let out the clutch. He said, she opened the door. <laughs> I was asking her questions out of the highway code book. I said, give me an example of a very popular road sign. She said, then pick your own strawberries half a mile. <laughs> Paddy shouted over to Mick. He says, Mick, have you ever gone to bed with an ugly woman? He says, no, but I woke up with a few. <laughs> Listen, he said, was it you or your brother was killed and got buried at sea? That must have been my brother. I wasn't in the Navy. <laughs> Never understand, he said, how my sister has three brothers, but I've only got two. <laughs> they were walking home that night, and they got lost, and they ended up on the railway track, walking up the middle of the railway track on the sleepers. And he said, my God, Mick, this is the longest of the stairs I've ever been on in my life. <laughs> oh, he said, I don't mind the stairs, it's these low handrails. Mary was out playing bingo last week. They play bingo different in Ireland. They shout the numbers out in Latin so only the Catholics win. <laughs> and the priests are called the numbers. The first house tonight will be a bungalow. <laughs> Boys down looking and we'll have no copying. Now, the first number out, it's on its own, 5 and 7, 57. <laughs> Right next door, two and three, twenty-three. <laughs> Top of the house, the chimbley. <laughs> anyway, up, one. <laughs> one and two, three. <laughs> and Mary kept thinking, Paddy said, put that number down, you've got that one. There's another one of your numbers, put it down. He said, Mary, would you shut your gob and mark your own card? She says, mine's full up. <laughs> he eventually shouted out, she said, now when you go to get your prize, she said, make sure you get a good prize. Don't make an idiot out of the two of us. He came back with a brand new second-hand pair of Wellington boots. <laughs> he says, the first was all good to me. It was a driving suit. <laughs> God, you're a tick. It was a divan suite. They're walking home the night. She said, my God, Paddy, slow down. I can't keep up with you. He said, Mary, when I'm by myself, I walk twice as fast. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad I'm not with you when you're by yourself. <laughs> they called in for some supper into the fish and chips shop. He said, fish and chips twice. The fella said, I heard you the first time. <laughs> and they're coming out of the chippy. And Mick tripped over the dustbin and a big cat shoomed out of the bin. He said, Mary, why would anybody throw a good cat like that away? <laughs> I met my wife in the tunnel of love. She was digging it. <laughs> when we got married, she was a bag of nerves. Now she's just a bag. <laughs> I think she's on the drugs, me, you know. The phone rang on Tuesday, and when I lifted it up, a man's voice says, Is the dope still there? <laughs> she wasn't feeling well. I took her to the doctor. The doctor put a glass tube in her mouth and said, Don't speak for ten minutes. I offered him 25 quid for it. Because, <laughs> you know, my wife has got a speech impediment. She won't shut up. This English fella went into a bank in Dublin trying to pull a fast foot on the cashier. He said, would you have change of an 18-pound note? Mick said, certainly. How would you like it now? Two nines or three sixes? <laughs> Got a great new drink now in Ireland. It's Guinness and Window Lane. You still get drunk, but in the morning your eyes are clear. Paddy went to the doctor. The doctor said, I've got bad news for you, Pat, and i got very bad news for you. The bad news is you've got 24 hours to live. And the very bad news is I tried to phone you yesterday. 
he went home to his wife. He said, Mary, the doctors give me these pills. I have to take them for the rest of my life. She says, what's wrong with that? He said, he's only give me four. <laughs> Mary sent her lad to the shop last week. She said, go down and get me ten pound of potatoes and don't get those big ones. They're too heavy to carry. Mick lost his job in the butchers. It took him five hours to hang up the mince. <laughs> then for this job, and the fellow says, Well, I have a fellow here today who hasn't turned up, Mick. If he doesn't turn up tomorrow, I'll send him home, and you've got the job. <laughs> but we work a system here in the company called The Week in Hand. You'll get paid a week on Friday. Ah, no problem. I'll start the week on Thursday. <laughs> He says, look, mate, go over to the storeroom and ask Sean for the big tin of green paint. Go down to my house and paint me porch. He came back about half past five, covered in paint. He said, I've done that job for you, sir, and by the way, it's not a porch, it's a Mercedes. <laughs> Went down to the shop to get himself a sandwich and said to the girl, are those fresh cream cakes in the window? Oh. She said, as fresh and as pure as the girl of your dreams. He said, how much are the meat pies? <laughs> she said, they're a pound for two. He said, how much for one? She said, 75 pence. He said, I'll have the other one. <laughs> he saw Sean last night. He said, Sean, where were you going yesterday morning when I saw you going to work? He said, I was going to work. Ah, I thought it was yourself. Well, when I got up to you, you were gone. <laughs> Are you still working with Mick? He said, no, Mick's dead. Ah, God, how long has he been dead? He said, well, if he'd lived to next Thursday, he'd have been dead a month. <laughs> what did he die of? Oh, nothing serious, he said. A uh, steamroller ran over his finger. He was picking his nose at the time. <laughs> I, I packed the job now. He said, the job was murder. I had to work a thing called shift work. I had to work three days on nights. Then it was three nights on days. And all day Saturday morning. <laughs> and the hours I had to work 12 hours a day. He said, six to six. The barber says, I work 14 hours a day, seven to seven. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to close the pub down and open the brothel. Mick said, if you couldn't sell drink, you'll never sell soup. <laughs> you want to see his wife? She had one tooth in her gob. She could chew pole mints without breaking them. <laughs> he had a face like a saint, Bernard. <laughs> and she loved the one-armed bandits, you know. He wakes up every morning with a mouthful of 50 peas and the rupture. Sean was at the dance on Friday. He said to me, how did you get in here? He said, I slipped the door on a fiver and he let me in for nothing. <laughs> but none of the girls had danced with me. He said, I don't know why. He said, well, I know why. Your feet stink. <laughs> Go and change your socks and they might dance. He saw him 20 minutes after. He said, I changed my socks and they still won't dance. He said, well, where's the pay you took off? He said, they're in my top pocket. This 18-year-old girl came to his door last week and said, I am from the catalogue. He said, I don't remember sending for you. <laughs> and the old folks went off on a mystery coaster last week in County Kerry, and they had the raffle to guess where they were going, and the driver won £47. <laughs> this English lad is in a pub in County Kerry, and he said to the barman, a pint of Guinness, a brandy, and whatever you want yourself. And he gave the barman a £20 note. And the barman gave him two pence change. He said, well, what did you have? He said, a pair of hush puppies. <laughs> and he's bragging to Mick about the marvellous job he's got in England and how much money he earns for wages and the big car he drives and the house he lives in. He said to Mick, you know, I've got a Porsche. He said, a Porsche? I've got two garden sheds and a greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs>